So this one's going to be pretty simple. Uh, I literally, I have a picture of a trail cam with a panther at night from someplace here in Texas. And I think it's going to come out pretty cool. But I'm using a really small, you can tell, a small canvas for this. So this is how you do a canvas, basically. But it's going to be real simple. There won't be a lot of colors and stuff. But the basis is still the same. So I'm going to, I got the white. I also have white using this. Okay. So I'm going to paint it white. All right. And I'm going to let that settle. Or I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do black. So we did white on a white canvas. And then we're coming back to do black. This is basically going to be a black and white. If you were doing other colors, you would add the other colors. I may do this one in a... Um, and another color down the road, but for right now, uh, I think the way the trail cam looks is really cool, and I think it'll look really cool on here. So we'll come back when it's dry. Well, now it's dry, so we need to put on some black. Mm, man, I'm running out of black too. Let's see what we got. Ooh, here, we got this. A little rust in PX. Yeah, semi-gloss. Brand new. Okay, there we go. Let that dry, and then uh, we'll come spin her around and hit her again to get rid of some of them white bubbles. So, a little while ago, we painted it black, and it added some white back over. So I'm gonna flip her over, shake it up with this. I'm using this this time. Usually I use this. But, since I'm almost out of that, we're going with the black, the rust gold. Even coats, always even coats, back and forth. And you don't just spray one solid spray. You're on, off, on, off, on, off, and you start before, your point, so you go across, like that, something like that, anyways, that's how you do it, so I'll let that dry, and that's good and black, so, here we have I didn't realize there was no sound, it was the first time I used the Xbox game screen record, so what I'm doing is importing the image, selecting full size, zooming out, and then deciding what I want to keep and get rid of. So I've selected it. And it's way larger than the screen. Clicking on edit. It's way larger than your workspace. Edit. Now I'm attempting to crop it. However, you're going to notice that I make a huge mistake. <laughs> Forget to click on the X. So I'm going to have to do it twice. But. This is setting up the crop and the area that I want to image, want to cut out. Cropping it down. This is the original. Actually, what this is, is actually just a screenshot on my phone that I sent to myself in Messenger. This is a trail cam of a panther in, uh, found in, oh, somewhere around Dallas-Fort Worth, a little south of there. So then you'll notice I forget to click on the X. Whoops, goes back, same size. So this is not a high quality image, but it comes out really good. So now I got to do it all over again. Don't forget to click on the X. We're going to crop, crop it again, the area I want. Click on it, zooming in, adjust your crop space.
And then, this time, this time I remember to click on the X. Somewhere. No. X. Click it on the X. Then click save. That brings it into my board. I zoom out. You'll notice it's still much larger than my board, which is fine because I'm gonna I'm going to resize it to the size of my board. Okay, so we've got this painted. Alright, I just brought it in. It's just a small oops, upside down. Four by five. But then painted it white, then black. It's gonna look cool on a trail cam. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure this to see what size I need. So I've got a I gotta take my glasses off. That's what I gotta do. One hundred and twenty five is its size by Hi, 125 high by 100 wide. So, I want the, I want it to go off the edges so that all of it is covered and it's not like got a weird square in the middle. So I'm gonna go, when I resize the image, 120, hmm, 127? by 104 ish roughly so that'll make sure that the image goes off the canvas and then I get a smooth a clean image all the way around with no square edges other than the canvas if that makes sense I hope I don't know now we're going to take the canvas and put it in our X tool. I am going to put it straight up to the top center. And it should be good. And since I'm not using air, I'm not going to bolt, I'm not going to hold it down. Oh, you know what we do have to do first though? Let's do this. Okay, we got 3.5, so that's what we're going with. Now, move it back to the center. Do the center as I can, all the way to the top. Make sure my tray is at the top, and there we go. the size we want I've got that set in there now what I've decided was I want my image I'm gonna leave it locked and I want it um, what did I said 100 and no, I've forgotten Because this is a square, pretty much. I gotta take that off. It's gonna drive me crazy. We're way off the paint. We're way off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to 
leave it that size and I'm going to re crop it so to speak using the clipping mask tool too there we go now I have an image that's exactly the size I wanted to I want it to go over the edges the reason I want it to go over the edges is so that it's clean and I don't have this square inside of the canvas right. first thing you gotta do is invert the image don't forget Maybe. There we go. So the black is what's going to turn out and the white is what's going to stay. So now that we've got that squared away, don't know what I was thinking. We're going to turn that up. Then we're going to go backwards. See what we can get to pop. Uh, I don't know what happened to the sound, but... What I'm doing in this sped up clip is uh, readjust, it's adjusting the file to get it to where what was white is now black. And so that the black will match when it burns what it would be if it wasn't inverted, if that makes sense. And trying to make them so that those areas will burn through the black paint and into the canvas now still no sound uh not real sure why but um now we're selecting the canvas selecting the image and selecting our settings um for speed for grayscale i picked jarvis then I did 180 for my lines per for my LPI. Then I did speed 40 and or power 40 and speed 225. Uh, well, let's get there. 225. Or 200. Or I couldn't decide. I don't know. <laughs> it was 200. So I've got speed 40, or speed 200, power 40, Jarvis for grayscale, 180 LPI. Now we're sending it to the printer, or to the printer, <laughs> to the laser. That's if it'll even parse all those layers or all it's those lines. still loading still loading it takes a while for it to send it and uh, i don't know some people say that theirs it won't doesn't send but this definitely sends now it's sent the whole file to the memory on the so, i'm sending it we'll see what happens it should come out all right i hope so that's my plan anyways And it's 30. But who knows? I so, haven't done one of these little tiny ones. I'm sending it. So we'll see what happens. It should come out all right. I hope. Well, that's my plan anyways. We'll see. But who knows? I have not done one of these little tiny ones like this. So here it goes. 38 minutes. What it looking like. We'll see.
And uh, that's it. Came out exactly how I hoped. Looks pretty good. It was a really low quality image. Added a hanger on the back. Um, don't forget if you like this video, hit the subscribe, share, and like button. Thanks.